And uh, we are extremely pleased that we have first invited talk. We will have nine more during this symposium. Uh, Professor Dan Eliezer from Ben Gurion University of Negev, Department of Materials Engineering from Israel. Professor, please. Champagne, so it's one of the best institutes so far, not offended to anyone else, and to many, many other places during the many years. So what I would like today, maybe we can, the lights to uh, <laughs> dim. So what I would like today is actually to give you an overview about hydrogen interaction with materials. I'm not going to details for any of the systems, but just to the principles how we can get to, be, to better understand the interaction of hydrogen with materials. So I'll talk, of course, about the overview about hydrogen degradation, structure material, aspects of hydrogen, hydrogen evolution, and especially about trapping a mechanism. So in effect, Less light to me? Uh, less light. Okay. I think it will be better for this one. So we all know that hydrogen and brief ferment, interaction with materials, with hydrogen, causes reduction of the ductility and change of molar fracture. But, and basically would say that the question remains over what temperature and what pressure those processes are taking place. So if I look in a general sink, I can say that there are three elements. One is hydrogen transport and the diffusion. So if I look in general, we have, let's say, hydrogen charging by gases hydrogen, by cathodic charging, and by hydride formation. So basically what is going, is going into two directions, one by diffusion, one by the dislocation transport. So hydrogen can go to any of the defect that I mentioned here, and then, of course, in the mode of change of mode of fracture. So one major thing that I did in my in the last studies, uh, it was about what would happen in the interaction of small amounts of hydrogen with the material, because basically we talked about the average of hydrogen, but in order to know how much hydrogen is located in a very specific place, you should go to some trapping and that I'll discuss. So I just gave here a, I just gave here a list of most of these materials. So the high strength steels are the most like mar aging and others are more susceptible to hydrogen enrichment and it goes by these things up to copper and aluminum. As I mentioned before, what we need, we need the formation of an atomic hydrogen in order that this reaction will take place. So as a general rule, after looking to many, many systems, you can see that materials become more vulnerable to hydrogen enrichment with increasing of the strength. So maraging is the worst. Let's say aluminum, much better. So just a list of the materials that during the years we covered, of course, and published in many, many, many papers. And so we see from stainless steels going to high strength steel, titanium, super alloys, and so on. A basic thing that I would like also to put my attention today is to say about how we measure those processes of hydrogen in Britain. Because if you look to the literature, let's say, there was a lot of work in the 80s and the 90s, and it was a little bit forgotten, I would say, and you can see that papers are sometimes are repeating themselves. In order to get and new advances in our understanding, we should look maybe to other uh, facilities that we can work with them. One thing is, 
For example, the, what I say here, the shock waves, I'll show a little bit later on, uh, that we discuss quite in details in some of my PhD students. So what I would like here to show how we can use different technologies for looking to hydrogen interaction with materials. Because the same effect that was measured, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, things that I can, but the question is how you, are, you should look with different facilities. So if you look, work on 304 or 316 that during the past is like welding to those things and so on, try now to see what would happen with the my, uh, seams, with uh, synchrotron and so on. So I just put here, for example, things that we covered and some of those things was done by and BAM in, in Germany, Berlin, that I have a position there too. So. One, as I say, about microstructure analysis. We know the conventional microstructure, but looking, looking to the microstructure using the seams, synchrotron, and of course, transmission. Hydrogen content is important. There are not too many things that you can measure the hydrogen, but in order to look to small amounts of hydrogen that are located at different sites, you can use the trapping, and there's thermodesorption and so on. And strength of it, of course, it's quasi-static tensile loading, dynamic experiments, and simulation. I just put it using Johnson model because that's one of the work, but not the one. So, and for example, if I'm talking about synchrotron and XR diffraction, most of the work is published by XR diffraction, naturally, it's for many years. But taking the synchrotron, we can know much more better about what's happening. So the basic thing, let's say, in very simple words, 100 experiments just to put with X-ray, it's like one experiment in control. But the basic thing is to look to in situ, to in situ observation of change and the distortion of the crystal structure. Um, using, of course, the seams, that's a word that it's just going on now at uh, at BAM in Ber Berlin, is actually to look to the depth profile, surface spectroscopy, just to mention the principles. And again, what I'm saying here to go out of, to, to bring you, look to new facilities that can be used for our better understanding for hydrogen enrichment. Okay, now talking about modeling, that of course it's something that people are working for many, many years. Uh, in general speaking, it's materials that are form hydrides and material that are not form, form hydrides. For example, titanium is forming hydrides, stainless steel is not. So those in general, and I just put what was believed, like hydrogen formation, uh, hydrogen uh, dislocation, interaction, latest bond. But if I discuss this in more details, what it's going to do today, I would say, Basically, people are working, let's say, put here with the hydride formation, that it's one system, but I would say that if I try to make a general statement here, if you took most of, most of the materials, you should look to the hydrogen-enhanced cohesion or hydrogen-enhanced local plasticity. So what we call it HED and ELP. Basically, all the systems that I mentioned before, and there's no time now in 20 minutes to do, to explain in more details, we have done through our papers, and we are going to be here quite a few days, and especially I'm looking to the discussion that's going to be on Thursday, then we can discuss this in more details. So, and for that, of course, there are many, many excellent work, as people from, from Illinois and St. Dion, especially Professor Sofronis and, and others, of course, and Professor Riches that I know him for many years, I'm not sure that he knows me, but I know you for so many years. So anyway, I'm saying we have it, the help that basically contributes to the slip band fracture in particular, and 
AGD may predominate the, for brittle interlingual fracture. So for example, one thing that we should do to take all the structural materials that we know, try to adapt those models to those materials and to see who works for what. Maybe a little bit, I'll talk about it later on. So now I would like to review some systems, just again, in a, uh, very shortly. One thing is going to be hydrogen attack, and I want to talk about it. One thing that also I'm doing today is I'm trying to relate the hydrogen briefment with the hydrogen storage and to do this reaction that we have. And again, in the industry of the oil, and it's very important to better understand hydrogen attack, that not so many work is done today on this subject. So basically, again, what we are saying here, that most of the existing data on failures of structural stilt used in hydrogen service under condition that lead to hydrogen attack. The mechanism is that, it, that gas, gas bubble are gross and driven by high internal pressure. So if you look, for example, to a pipeline that is done from carbon steel, the 1020, let's say in high temperature, we'll say a little bit about it, you form the methane, and in effect it's the hydrogen is the source, formed met metal, bubbles are formed, the bubbles are formed in the material itself, and they are formed very high pressures, and finally we get a failure about it. So, so there are what we call Nelson curves for many years, they were established many years ago, but still every failure that was observed in any, like Exxon and other big companies, we uh, are looking here and they put a point. For example, if I, if I, uh, if I'm looking to, let's say, the, this pressure, 1,000 psi, if I show this temperature, the temperature should be, and that should be the, pre the pressure. Here, it means there is failure. Down, it's not failure. Why it, it happens, that's, I think that now we know quite about, a lot about it, but at that time, when these things was very popular, we don't have the facilities that I just mentioned before. So if you want, take those facilities, apply to this, you'll get much more information. And so now energy is a very important subject. People are discussing this. So just briefly to see here, we are talking, okay, that's one thing. Now I would like to say about another subject that I call it positive effect. Usually hydrogen is, is uh, connected to us with negative effects, as we already mentioned, but we can look to it to a, what we call positive effects. For example, if you look, if you look here, the negative heat solution, this is for titanium. If you take steels, you'll go the other way around. We can I beta phase stabilizer, for example, in titanium, you can, let's say you heat it in that high temperature, cool down, and get from different in the grain size. Again, what we are saying here, that refined microstructure can lead to improving properties of the material. You increase the fatigue, and there are, there are a lot of studies about it, and of course we can talk on titanium. But what is important also, that when we talk positively, is the hydrate formation. And as today there is a lot of work of uh, hydrogen as an energy source, hydrides is again uh, started, a lot of people are working on it, and we have done, of course, many work about it. So as you can see here, for example, as a positive, you can form those powders out from titanium by that method that I mentioned before. And many years before that everybody worked on nano, we can have the same thing that was taken maybe 10 or more years ago, that you form the gamma titanium alumina, the gamma titanium L by ref refining microstructure. Uh, as we worked on that study to change microstructure by hydrogen, again, many uh, work was, was done about it, and we can see that we can move from quasi-crystalline state to, from amorphous state to quasi-crystalline. So in effect, we started, like uh, we take the iron 
um, we take some systems with uh, titanium, with iron, but that system is amorphousing the zirconium, copper, nickel, aluminum, and you can see it goes from amorphous side to quasi-crystalline. So what I said here, there is negative effects, we talked about it, there are positive effects. The bottom line, you expose the material to hydrogen, you do some cooking treatments, temperature, temp uh, rating, cooling rate, and so on, and you get a refined microstructure, high strength materials. Now, as I mentioned before, what would happen that actually what is the thing that hydrogen is not homogeneously distributed in material? And we know, yeah, yeah so uh, that it's very difficult to try to make so many things in a short time. But as I, when I was uh, to do the mathematics for only one subject, it's much more easier. But now I want that we'll get out from that talk by understanding that hydrogen is a very important thing. Today we have much more, many people are working on it because the hydrogen story that came out and we should look to what would happen uh, if we can use new facilities to go to those things. So that's about it. So I'm saying physical nature of trapping. And from here what we have to take that is that we know that, that could be irreversible traps and reversible traps. So if you have the then activation energy 60 kilojoules per mole, per mole, we talk about a reversible trap and less but irreversible traps. So we can see all this. For example, grain boundaries are reversible traps and irreversible are voids. For example, so that it's uh, let's look welding. So any imperfect, it's it's a uh, it can be a defect. So welding is an important thing that people are doing, and I used quite a lot of research to do welding on those structure materials. The way that I did it, it was to make, for example, thick welding, 90% of 90% argon, 10% hydrogen. In that case, you bring the hydrogen directly to the defect itself, and then you look again with 3DA and so on about the role of second phases and so on. Uh, okay, that. So if I look, for example, from the different titanium alloys, that was part of a program that I was involved when I worked at the US Air Force about what we call NASP, National Aerospace Program, about having an aeroplane that can go 25 Mach. But anyway, there was what kind of material can stand this. And then we look different materials from titanium aluminides, and the most important parameter here, hydrogen activities, activity, as function F of hydrogen concentration. And you can see from here what materials can look from titanium and so on. That's a lot of work in it, but again, I'm putting here topics to think about it. Hopefully, we'll meet maybe during the conference, discuss in details, or you know, best basically. As usually, you look always to the microstructure, and, in, and you have to end up in material selection. So for example, I take titanium with different microstructure, just to see how I'm working. You take usually the things about the microscopy, different phases, and then I'm looking to those, what I'm calling, using the TDA, that we have done quite a lot of work in it, how we use the TDA in order to better understand what's going. So basically what we are going here, from the TDA, we can get what? Activation energy, and we can get the binding energy, and the amount of the hydrogen at a specific place. And from here, for example, we can get, for example, very reverse, reversible side. I can go after that to see, to talk about modeling. And uh, if I look at steel, that was a subject that I worked a lot, and today it's much more important. We are looking for pipelines about different steels. And the point is how to look to phase transitions at the crack tip, and basically what happened here, if I put it everything in one slide, we have stable steels and we have unstable steels. For example, 310, it's a stable steel. 25% chrome, 20% nickel. 304, unstable steel. 18, 8. So what we are looking is hydrogen-induced phase transformation. So you talk about diffusion in the austenitic phase, 10 to the minus 11 centimeters squared per second, and 
Martin Zittig phase if R4 m is 10 to the minus 5. So what it means here, to try to look to the kinetics, and then, of course, we've done quite a lot, what is going here. So then you have only two slides here. Then I'll go about, we, we put something, what you call it, a stability factor that you know from, the, from Scheffler diagrams, and then you look to different austerity. So I, don't, I will not go, I know that it's time it's very short, but what I'm saying here and what I try to do in these 20 minutes is, I say people are working on hydrogen, very important subject, as all of you know, I don't have to convince the people that are working on hydrogen, but I can tell you from different reports, Department of Energy and others, that today, as people are looking to hydrogen as an energy source, and all reports are saying that maybe 10, 15 years from now, that should be the hydrogen storage, that should be a solution, not the electrical car and so on. We should better, or the pipelines, we should understand better the interaction with hydrogen materials. Very complicated subject, but in order not to repeat it all the time, we should take new facilities, as I mentioned, SIMS, uh, Synchrotron, TDA, and others, in order to look even to the same effect that was done 20 years ago. And then should be the study is the story any clearer? And that's what I would like to do on Thursday. What we have before, what we have done today, what is new, and how we can uh, better understand what is going. Because if you look at hydrogen that goes through pipeline or in a car, you should have zero uh, failures. So thank you very much for your attention.